Prepare a gross value added statement from the following profit and loss account of Strong Limited. Show also the reconciliation between gross value added and profit before taxation. Now this is a question from the study material, which is question number two. Okay. Let's see the details. The income is basically sales, which is 610. Other income, 25. Then expenditure, you have production and overhead expenses, admin expenses, and there are certain notes also which are attached to each one of these explanations. Interest and other charges, depreciation, profit before taxes, provision for taxes. Then you have something, a new thing which has come in this question is the balance as per last balance sheet. So there is some profit balance which is available from the last balance sheet. Okay. Please note that the gross value added statement is in respect of a particular year. So if there's anything pertaining to the last year that has to be excluded. So this profit is added to the profit for the current year and it becomes 101. Then you are given the numbers which are transferred to general reserve proposed dividend and the surplus which is carried to balance sheet. Let us see the notes as well. The note says production and operational expenses comprise of all these five items, actually six of them. Decrease in stock, consumption of raw material, consumption of stores, salary, wages and other benefits. So this is the one where we need to keep our ears and eyes open. Then cess and local taxes. These are what? These are payments to the government. Other manufacturing expenses. Okay. Admin expenses include inter alia audit fees of rupees 4.8 lakhs, salaries and commission to director rupees 5 lakhs and provision for doubtful debts rupees 5.2 lakhs. Interest and other charges include on working capital, on fixed loan and on debentures. So basically you are given various details. You have to calculate or you have to prepare a gross value added statement. So let's say this is your gross value added statement. So you have sales. How much is the number? 610. Right? I can also take it out to the outer column. Then what do I calculate? I calculate the cost of bought in material. I did not include other income because other income is something which will be calculated after we've calculated the value from trading operations. Production and operational expenses includes 465. Production and operational expenses. 465. Right? But this 465 is substantiated by a note. This note says this includes all these expenses. Right? Now we need to find out whether out of any of these six expenses they are allocable to those six parties for whose benefit we have to calculate it. If yes, it cannot be deducted from sales. Right? Now decrease in stock is obviously a expense, consumption of raw material expense, stores expense, salaries wages. This is an application. Applications mean what? Whenever you calculate GVA, one thing is from sales you reduce expenses to calculate GVA. Once you get GVA you find out how many is attributable to the various parties. This is known as application and these expenses are what has to be deducted. So these are the expenses. This is an application. So 41 is an application. 11. Cess and local taxes. Cess and local taxes are to the account of government. Therefore this is also an application. Minus salaries. How much is that? 41 minus cess and taxes. 11. So 52, 465 minus 52 gives you 413. Right? Then you have administration expenses of 19. So administration expenses include what? Audit fees. So is audit fees an employee expense? No. Why? Because an auditor is not an employee of the company. Salaries and commission to director 5 lakh. 
Now this is obviously an allocation or application. So I will take admin expenses of 19 minus director commission. Why? Because this is an application. How much is that? 5. 14. Audit fees is not to be deducted as I told you it's a third party expense and provision for doubtful debts. This is again a normal business stuff which will not be considered. Now insofar as interest is concerned you are given certain details on working capital loan 8. On fixed loan now fixed loans are what? These are long term loans. Debentures are always considered as long term. Now when we consider the expense we do not count count on the expense for the long term finance shareholder which is 19 in this case right so this is done so from interest and other charges which is 27 we will reduce minus fixed loan minus debentures this is 12 this is 7 so 19 gone from 27 gives you 8 right then you have depreciation depreciation is an application to the entity so we will exclude this provision for taxes as again something which is an application to the government so there's nothing more we'll just calculate the cost of bought in materials so cost of bought in materials will be a sum of these three 413 427 435 right and your value from Trading will be how much? That will be equal to 610 minus 435, which is 175. To this, you will add other income plus other income 25. So you will get 200 as the gross value added. Right? Talking about the application. How is this 200 distributed amongst people? So employees. Employees get how much? Employees get 41. Right? Government. Government gets what? It gets the cess payment. Right? Plus income tax. So 11 was the cess. And income taxes. 16 27 right long term finance this was on the fixed loan and debenture 12 plus 7 19 right then towards shareholders now shareholders will get two things or one they will just get the retained earning now this is important please note this the total surplus carried to the balance sheet is 30 okay this belongs to the entity right what belongs to the shareholder is the proposed dividend right so we will write just 11 in case of shareholders and the retained earning will belong to the entity how much are the retained earning total transfer to the balance sheet is 30 out of which 7 is for the last year so the current year transfer is how much 30 minus 7 or 23 plus depreciation right which is 14 plus general reserve 60 again this belongs to the entity right so the sum of these three let's do the sum of all of them and see whether this is 200 there is one item missing here which is salaries to director which was 5 and once you add these now you will get 200 so this total of 200 is always going to be equal to gross value added statement right 
The second part says you have to calculate or you have to reconcile GVA, gross value added with profit before tax. So my gross value added is 200. My profit before tax is how much? 110. Right? So we have to reconcile these two. Now while calculating GVA, we do not deduct any of the six expenses which were discussed here. But in order to calculate your profit before taxes, you can deduct all the items which are here, which are tax deductible. So should we see which all are tax deductible here? Employees is tax deductible, right? So we will just write plus or actually minus if you start with GVA. Right? Minus director payment. Director salary is a tax deductible item. Five. Right? Then you had government says and income tax. Income tax is not deductible for tax purpose. Says is. So says. Right? Long term finance. This interest is obviously deductible for tax purposes. Long term finance. What are the balance shareholders? This is this proposed dividend which is not deductible. Then retained earning again is not deductible. Depreciation is deductible for tax purposes. Minus depreciation. What's the number? It's 14. And beyond that there is general reserve which is again not tax deductible. So if I add all these up, this gives me 46, 57 plus 33, 90. So 200 minus 90 gives you 110 which is profit before tax. The reconciliation is very important, but very easy. So from your gross value added statement, you just reduce those items which have been considered as an allocation or an application to the six parties, but which are deductible for tax purpose.